now we're going to move on. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for that. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate all your thoughts. We're going to move on to titles that we'd like to see announced. So these are going to be titles that we think we probably won't see, but we may. <laughs> we're, we're dreaming here. This is our dream category. Uh, Malik, do you want to take yeah. this one? Sure. I mean, I kind of hinted at it before. Anything Bethesda, right? Whether we get uh, Elder Scrolls announced, Starfield announced, Fallout, I want to know that they're working on something definitively. I want to know that I can look forward to a Bethesda game in 2022. I I really firmly don't believe that we are going to get any Bethesda games this year. If we do, it'll be a great surprise. But I would rather have that team or the multiple teams that they have just kind of focus tease something for us maybe give us some gameplay trailers of something and then just have the game released in 2022 but bethesda is known to keep their stuff under wraps until it's basically ready until right. hey here's the game so i mean the the possibility of getting a teaser and then it coming out next year very unlikely but it's been a long long time since elder scrolls 6 or yeah wait is it yeah. would it, it was... you know, but, the, the latest Elder Scrolls, would it be six after be six, Skyrim? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's been a while since uh, we've gotten any information on Elder Scrolls. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Caboose, how about you? Uh, well, for me, um, this is a game that's been rumored for a very long time that I'm like 99% sure is happening because of the people that have reported these rumors are very reputable. Uh, and that's the Guardians of the Galaxy game from Eidos Montreal uh for for a little while now jason schreier had been reporting that it's a thing and it's happening apparently uh and i hope that we see it soon i mean marvel you know regardless of what people think about avengers marvel clearly has had a new initiative on releasing triple a games based on their properties and one of their more recent properties that has blown up into popularity is guardians of the galaxy uh, and I think a lot of people in general are really into that stuff. The the weird aliens, the space exploration, you know, the witty characters, the diverse characters that are involved. Like one's a talking raccoon, one's a friggin' tree that says three words. <laughs> you know, it's it's cool. It is interesting. Um, and it would do, it totally work as a game. Uh, and I hope that uh, that we do get to see it fully realized and get to see kind of what what it's all about. I'm hoping it's um. I'm hoping it's kind of an open world game, but I also would like the idea that maybe you get these kind of hub worlds that you can travel to, and there's just a bunch of different planets that you can travel to. I'd love some space missions, some some space fights or something like what, that, something what if crazy. It's just Star Fox reskin. <laughs> oh man, that would be frustrating. I hope <laughs> I hope it's like you actually play as the Guardians. Um, but like, yeah, it, this honestly, it could be like marvel's answer to suicide squad kill the justice league like a right. co-op online although maybe avengers is technically supposed to be that but a fully open world potentially co-op game where you can play as the different members of the guardians with your friends online or alone um and just like do some space stuff i don't know i think it could be really cool and then yeah. if they want, connect yeah. it to yeah. Avengers. Like, if you're not going to connect Spider-Man to Avengers, okay, fine. You're going to bring in your own Spider-Man. Cool. Whatever. But if they could connect the Guardians game to the Avengers game and maybe build up to a massive event similar to that of, like, what they did with Infinity War and all that in the movies, that could be really fun. Yeah, I think they have the obvious advantage of, you know, studios working alongside each other that now, you know, the Marvel's Avengers could loosely... or even heavily tie into this uh, rumored Guardians of the Galaxy game. I think that's a brilliant idea, and I think they're in that unique position where they're able to do that if they want to. Or I think if Marvel, because I think as well because Idos Montreal worked on Avengers as well, and so yeah. I'd imagine on the flip side that Crystal Dynamics must have helped out in some way with this Guardians game if it if it does exist, which I like. I think it does, but if it does exist, I'd imagine that Square Enix is helping out in some way as well. And uh, considering that they're kind of under the same roof with Crystal yeah. and uh, and Eidos Montreal, there's more of a likely chance to see those two games connect versus um, like what they what happened with uh, with Spider Man PS4 and Avengers. Yeah. Do you think it? Do you think it's likely that they just go for a whole new game, or do you think it's more likely that they kind of axed to the game and started put like developing the characters for Avengers? Oh, oh, so you're saying, like, is it going to be just its own thing that doesn't feel like Avengers, or is it going to potentially be built off of the blueprint of Avengers? Yeah. 
I think I hope it'll be its own thing because I wouldn't want it to just be straight up the Avengers game, but with the Guardians in a different setting. Uh, right. I'd rather like it feel completely different uh, mechanically and from a gameplay perspective, um, which granted might make it more difficult if they were to want to connect the games. Mm -hmm. um, but even so, like I just I think it's just better that way that Eidos Montreal is creating something that's their vision and not borrowed from another studios. Yeah, and Eidos has always made great games. So yeah, that's just it, yeah. yeah. especially with like, the action adventure genre. Uh oh, there we go. <laughs> there she we is. lost Camille. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I hope. Hopefully, that does happen, uh, and we do get that game revealed at some point this year. That is my like, and if we're living in dreamland and fantasy world, the game that I'd like to see. But um. Who who knows? We'll see if uh, if that happens or not. I don't have like high hopes or high expectations of it, but considering it's been rumored for so long, I do see there being a chance. Yeah, yeah. I and I mean too, it would be I me personally because I just picked up the first edition of Rocket Raccoon the uh, comics. Oh, okay. I would love to see a Rocket Raccoon Groot origin story. Yes. I mean, come on, like who wouldn't want that? There are rumors as well that the third Guardians movie is going to get a little more in Rocket's Ooh, origin and yeah. stuff, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm down for too. I love that character. I think he's like, like the character is just way more layered than than people realize, uh, even in comics and in the films. Uh, and so I'd love to see that character explored. It'd be cool if they did that for the game. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, what about you? Yeah, I guess uh, I'll go. Um, I mean. My, mine, I hope, uh, really speaks to Camille as well. But uh, mine would be a Legend of Zelda 35th Anniversary Collection, kind of similar to what we've seen with Mario this year uh, with their um, little uh, compilation between uh, 64, Galaxy, and Sunshine, uh, even though uh, Sunshine's a trash game. Uh, <laughs> what? Whoa! <laughs> you take that back. No, that's, it's an awful game. Guys, come on. I I didn't know it's, I worked at the monster. You were bound. You were I'm bound not... to have a bad take at some point. Steve. <laughs> 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 it happens to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not that great. It's overhyped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, I, I I really think that uh, this being the 35th anniversary of such another beloved Nintendo character, why not just go all in and do a similar uh, collection? Hopefully. Um, they kind of learn from some of their mistakes that they learned from this uh, Mario collection in that it was kind of half-baked. They didn't really go as much. They, they they pulled some punches in terms of what it was. I really hope mm. that this time around they they put a little more love and attention to it. Um, if I if I were to to go into it, I would really hope that they give us a way to play like Ocarina of Time, Twilight yes. Princess, oh. rework oh, Skyward oh, Sword. Princess. Yes! Oh my god, Steve! Skyward. Right? Steve. Yes, I, the, I feel like collection. it's been too long. We have not got a really good remaster of Ocarina of Time, and the, playing it on a Switch would just be so good. And even Skyward Sword, I feel like a lot of people didn't play that just because of the Wii yeah. mechanics, yeah. but it's a really great uh, Zelda game. And, and that's kind of where I'm going with, like, I hope that they put a little more love and attention to it. I know that they got rid of, like, the waggle uh, controls with uh, Mario Galaxy, but I hope that they really go into the, the minutia of the gameplay for Skyward Sword and rectify it so that it can just be played with a controller very traditional. Because I know a lot of people, including myself, they were turned off by Skyward Sword. Though, like, that game has such a great storyline. It's just yeah. kind of unfortunate that it was boggled down by, you know, these these mechanics uh but yeah. I, I hope that they, they go in and give this franchise some love and attention uh, especially because i don't know nintendo's obviously one of those um publishers that they'll they'll create this way for you to play all your beloved games and then take that away they always take away like the the virtual um wh whatever they called it on the wii like the virtual emulator or whatever so that you could go play super nintendo games and stuff like that then they took it away that the Switch yeah, doesn't really console, have yeah. virtual console. Thank you. Yeah, we don't really have a way to play these older Zelda games anymore unless you have a uh, 3DS or the online membership will yeah. allow you to play like SNES, NES versions. But for N64, um, 
yeah, yeah you're, you're really out of luck there in GameCube. So, yeah, I feel like I would love to see that. Knowing Nintendo and how much love they give their IPs, I feel like we will see lots of love for Legend of Zelda fans, for Link, and I'm going to eat all of it up because I'm so excited <laughs> for it. Um, now, I just want to say, back to uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I was losing my mind before my internet cut out because <laughs> I was getting so mad that you were even thinking of tying the Avengers and Guardians together. No! Why? Leave it. Let it be. Let them be separate. I think that's okay. way too much content there that's just... Mm -mm. I, don't we think, don't, I don't think it's like something I'm dying a Marvel. for. Marvel... Okay, Marvel whoa, whoa, whoa. Cinematics. A Marvel, Marvel Games cinematics. universe would be cool. No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's where uh, I draw the line. Uh, I, I, Listen, I'm not like, it's not something I'm like itching for. I just, I think it would be cool if it happens, it happens. But it's not something where it's like, you need to do this or something like that. Yeah. I just think that it would be, it could be fun if they were to try and create some sort of crossover event where in the Guardians of the Galaxy game, there's some content for the Avengers. And in the Avengers game, there's some content for the Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that yeah, could be fun. And, yeah, just, and it could also be fun for what Malik said, you know, the reskin Star Fox Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I'd take that. I'd play that. Um, so there you have it. That's my take. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Marvel also take. treads a thin line of their games becoming accessories to the movies. Yes. I, I think there's a very thin line that they're going to have to be careful of. Yeah. And I feel, yeah. but I, with that, I do feel like um, Marvel as a whole, they're in the business of making money. So I feel like we may not see guardians until closer to the release of guardians of the galaxy or a bit after the movie volume yeah. three. I, I think as well, like it should just be to be expected at this point that whatever they're going to do with this guardians of the galaxy game, whether it comes out around the third movie or not is going to be kind of heavily based on the ideas of the movie. Cause it's like, let's just, you know, call a spade a spade. Guardians of the Galaxy was not a known brand or a, a comic that people were actively reading until the film came out with James Gunn. Exactly. Uh, it was until yeah. those films that that brand and those characters really jumped in popularity. And so if they were going to make a game, it would be kind of like with Avengers, you can take some liberties, do a little bit of your own thing because if Captain America has a shield with a star on it, you know he's Captain America. If Iron Man's in a red and gold suit, you know he's Iron Man. So, like, you can change some things there and try and do something a little bit uh, in your own way and have some creativity because the, the brand is just so familiar. Uh, but with Guardians of the Galaxy, if you start to go, like, heavily lean into the comic stuff and, and stray away a little bit of some of the ideas introduced in the films, it might be a little too confusing for some people, or it might not feel like the Guardians of the Galaxy that they've already fallen in love with. It's such a it's such a new brand still that to start changing things up drastically might not be the best idea. Uh, and so, like, I see no matter what that that game will come out and be heavily inspired by the film interpretation. Mm -hmm. Hey, and I mean... And Diesel's getting into video games. He could come back. Oh, no. As yeah. long as he doesn't make another Fast and the Furious game, we're good. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. We're gravy. Yeah. Um, okay, for mine, you guys follow the rules and put one game. I put a few. So I put Beyond Good <laughs> and Evil. Now, okay, I'm going to say this one I want to see announced just because I feel like we forgot about Beyond Good and Evil when we first saw it. I want it so much. Um, I want that it, game. It looked so good. All the, the behind the scenes stuff I saw at E3 looked amazing. It's just such a huge world. And if you're able to do anything or what Ubisoft is promising, we're going to be able to do like zoom out into like seeing the whole galaxy um, in this world. I feel like I just want to see that now. So I'm hoping that we see another trailer with a date of when it's going to be released. And maybe that date will be in a few years, a couple of years. I'm also going to say, I want more Kojima. I want Silent Hill. You know, I want to see that announced. I really yeah. do feel Silent Hill is a thing that's happening. Kojima has been very quiet about his next project. And I feel that's because it is a Silent Hill game. Mm. Do you and think yeah, then like Kojima it. Productions has acquired the like, no, IP, I, or do you think I they're feel, just they've made amends with Konami? I feel like he might have made amends for or may have more freedom 
uh, because mm. it may be a joint partnership with Konami and uh, Kojima Productions. Mm. Um, and, you know, of course, we're if it does happen, we're going to see that title screen and it's going to pop up a Kojima production because mm. if he's making any, any deal with Konami, he's going to have full creative uh, control of that one. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to see that game <laughs> anytime soon, but I just want it to be announced because Returnal, that last trailer really psyched Ooh. me out because I saw the door and I yeah. thought we were going to see Silent Hill. So now I just want to see it. I, I want to ask though, what does everyone think of like the fact that Konami blocked PT from going to PS5? Like, do you think that maybe it's because that's just a remnant of the past now and whatever they're doing with Silent Hills now is so different that they don't want people to be thinking of that? Or do you think maybe that could be evidence that it's a game that might not be happening? I feel like it's more evidence it's a game that is happening. Just okay. because mods, modders and hackers like had their way with PT. They discovered all these backdoors, all these codings. I think now that Silent Hill hopefully is happening, Konami's like, okay, we need to kind of get that under control because some of these ideas are going to be used in the game. So they just mm. pulled it. I think okay. it's also okay. just... And like Konami's a weird company and they probably looked at that and they're like old things old why even bother maybe yeah maybe like yeah, they're I just so. like a weird company that uh, does strange things um but you no know, going back to, to what you were talking about with the Returnal trailer i mean someone at sony had to approve that and <laughs> that is the biggest blue balls moment <laughs> of the entire year <laughs> they showed that door and they knew exactly what they were doing like that Sony had to approve that they had to, you know, write that check and say, listen, like, we're going to do this knowing that everyone watching has that love for that demo and has that nostalgia for that image, that imagery. I, I really do think that there is something in the works. And like, like you guys are saying that if Ko Kojima is going to do a project like Silent Hill with Konami, I think PlayStation and Sony have to be in the middle of that to be like the peacekeeper. The mediators, the yeah. Yeah. they're the ones that are really pushing this project along i don't think it's mm. konami approaching kojima or kojima approaching yes. konami i think Sony is in the middle of being like well you guys aren't doing anything with silent hill let's just give it to this guy like he he was on to something and then you guys ruined the relationship so let's let's get this working let's make it uh, work especially yeah. after konami is trying to pick up the pieces like metal gear what the heck was survive like what the hell was that, right? It was we a piece of that. junk, right? <laughs> um, so they know they need to kind of piece together these beloved IPs that made their name famous, right? And yes, they might have made the mistake over decades of being a publisher of giving all of their creative freedom to this one person who, you know, when people get frustrated as what happens with creative jobs sometimes, uh, now they take all those fans away from you and it's really hard to pick up the pieces with that. So I feel like, you know, they're all mature adults. <laughs> they're able to come together with the help of uh, PlayStation. And I think that's PlayStation saying this is going to be an exclusive and this is going to be one of the biggest fan moments in PlayStation history. It is, um, do you yeah. think as well, like, are they bringing back Norman Reedus? Are they going, do you think it's completely, starting from scratch silent no. hills or do you think there's still like some of the ideas that they had for the original game are being brought in like and being brought back for this if they're if they're doing um, a silent hill with kojima productions you can expect norman reedus to be there because of their close friendship mm. and you could expect kojima is an artiste so he does have a little bit of an ego to him so if he feels his idea was the right direction he's not starting from scratch he's going that way right. i know he did use some of his ideas in death stranding as well so we may see like some things adapted to kind of make up for some of his ideas being used um right. but i feel like he's not starting from scratch if he's a part of that project yeah no, I, I think, think i agree on that if anything he's gonna double down now no, I, I just, like I agree. I, think I, I just like, I thought PT on like PT still is one of the scariest games yes. I've ever played. It's and it's yeah. pure genius that game. Mm -hmm. And it because it's it has nothing like obviously there are jump scares, but a lot of it is just atmosphere. Like yes. when you're walking by the radio and it seems like it's a news report, but then all of a sudden the radio is talking to you. Like 
I love that stuff. Like you just hear him going to a news report. And he's like, don't touch that dial. Now we're just getting started. And it's like, oh my God, I love stuff like that. And it creates this level of like eeriness where yeah. you're not, you're ready. Like you're going around a corner preparing for something to jump out at you, but because something isn't, it gets you scared every time you go through that door and have to go around that corner again. You know, I, I love that stuff. It was just yeah. that, like yeah, just that demo. Around. That demo is pure genius. And you're right, Camille, a lot of people modded it. And I'm sure you guys have seen about how people found out that the ghost or the, the thing that's Lisa, like chasing yeah, you, yeah. she's behind you all the time, the yeah. whole time, throughout the oh. entire demo. They modded it so that they turned around the camera um, and she's behind you like constantly, like all the time she is behind you. I thought that's, that stuff is so, so cool. Like, yeah, I, I I really hope that this game does end up happening and is it is revealed or comes out soon because I would love to see what Kojima had in store for us. No, Plus, absolutely. like, uh, just I, I know we have to take a quick break, but like, just going on that, like the fact that Lisa, this is why a Silent Hill and like this game just means so much because the fact and why they might have pulled it from the PlayStation Store, the fact mm. that Lisa is following you throughout the house. Raises a question, why would that be in the playable trailer? Is Lisa a huge part to the gameplay, right? right? There's so mm. many aspects that Ooh. hackers have broken down um, just looking into the code that I think right. could give away a lot uh, to what the Silent Hill game may be. But I wonder as well, like, because a part of what makes PT so good is that, and, and I know we have to go to a quick break, so I'll make this last point. But a part of what makes PT so great is that you're just in these two hallways. And it's like mm. this everlasting loop that you constantly go through. In in the full game, what do you think happens there? Do you think there are like multiple houses that are the same concept that we go to one by one? Or does it become more of like an exploration thing? Like, do, do you lose the luster of what makes PT so good if you mm. then kind of open the, the door factor. and get yeah. to explore a little more, you know? Yeah, that's going to be an interesting question if they decide to go that way but i think we could all agree if konami does continue with silent hill the only way to do it is with kojima um mm, yes. just because yeah. pt is considered still one of the greatest games out there and it's just a playable trailer so mm. we'll just have to wait and see but for now let's take a quick break and we'll be right back in this loop of life 